Lawrence. You appear to be online. If you could verify for me, Robin, that would be fantastic. It's too bad I didn't have my music for here. Now? Okay. I'm not going to know until someone says something. For all I know, there might not be anybody around. Kind of stairs on my computer, my channel should be opened up there. Oh, there you are. Oh, oh, never mind it. That answers that question. Also, let's get some more of this sorted out. We've got our roast of beef. There's a silver stick on that side, so I'm going to let that stay down so that it has uh, ample time to break down, especially if it's in with everything else. <laughs> New camera angles are sexy. Second one's probably not done yet. There is a second tier one emote that you guys may have used. Oh, that's for people who are subscribed. Uh, if you had Frank Face Z on your tablet, you'd see a little bomb next to your name too. It's an extension for Google Chrome, so I don't know if you can get it for Twitch or not. I'm not sure. Alright, now we don't have any more tester sauce, so I'm going to have to do this roast of beef a little bit differently. Robin, was there any flavors in particular that you wanted? Um, yep. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to go on the fly right now. We got some... Sweet onion dressing right now. I'm going to coat the roast beef in it. Now, the other thing is that if you look at the roast beef itself, it's actually very lean. So, adding a little bit of oil to it will not only give it flavor, but it also make sure that it doesn't, it'll stay tender because of the oil that's in it rather than the uh, shrink up or get tough because you know lack of fat that kind of stuff so that's all the sweet onion dressing this is also a great way for me to get rid of extra stuff in the house now there's probably some salt in there i'm not going to do too much more here just a light amount more of it is actually going to be going down into the bottom of the roaster in case i decide on making a gravy and of course black pepper And I don't think Robin really had a preference for what she wanted for her roast beef. 
That's exactly what I was going to do. I was going to add mustard. McKay, how's it going? It does feel good. Feels good to get some food going. Now, what do we got here for mustard? I'm sure we don't have like five different kinds at all. So, mustard and do oh no. I'm gonna go with standard mustard. Cause standard mustard always has that uh, kick to it. Now, lots of mustard. And that's it. Now we're going to put a bit of water in the bottom of the roaster. And our roast beef is basically ready to go. Let me put a cover on it afterwards. I think we're also going to chop up an onion to put in with that roast. All right. at much about the size of it. Nope. And of course my dog is all like, oh this is a great time to find the kitchen now while well, there's wires and cameras and shit everywhere. No. You go couple fuck off dog. <laughs> this is gonna be epic. I'm hoping it's gonna be alright. <laughs> it should be fun. Alright, so now the only other thing I didn't add to the roast beef was garlic. How did I not put in garlic? There we go. Bit of garlic granules. Just gonna take it that outside piece here. Some people probably shit the bed about me taking off the exterior layer of the onion. The thing is with onions is that they very easily get kind of papery from the skin when it starts to dry out. So I make sure that I eliminate that chance of ever happening. I can't remember the last time I've ever found a piece of like tough skin and onions that I prepared. So, And I am not a typical cook I am not fast with a knife I don't do fancy things I don't gauge my fingers and stuff like that I just cut the way I know how to cut that I feel is safe for me and I suggest that everybody else do the same exact thing don't worry about how someone feels about you cutting stuff up you worry about you cutting stuff up it's not their fingers to worry about and I've got made fun of for it before but uh, I've also had my consistency be a lot better than some people's as well. So <laughs> taking your time is not necessarily a bad thing. Oh, and I've never really cut myself with a knife. It's a lot. I think I cut myself once, and that was like not that long ago, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, other than that, yeah, I've never really cut myself. And I think I might have actually done it by mistake. Like I might have jabbed myself in the finger, but like when I was moving my knife back or something from a pan like this. So no, I'm not going to do it again today. Don't worry. You guys aren't going to get to see uh, this isn't going to turn into horror. not to help cook at all it's actually going to be put in there so that any of the drippings from the sausage doesn't burn onto the pan and become infinitely possible to get off 
or um, you know end up like sticking to the pan so much that it doesn't you know come off at all. Yeah, a moon is the one who uh, went backstage to Misfits, Robin. <laughs> I know some Misfits stuff. Robin knows more of it than me because, well, it was her thing. Uh, now, what am I going to put those in? Should be able to put these. I got extra trees up. That I'm gonna cook up as well. Actually, this one here. It, oh no, that that's the trees. Oh, that's the trees right here. All right. Two pieces right there. This one. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, they're both. Trees. These are like four dollars a piece. So it was actually like cheap. With this much chorizo. Usually chorizo goes for a lot more. I don't know why. And of course they're not gonna fit in there, are they? First things first, let's uh, snip you guys. And then do the same thing with you guys. Now if I know anything about sausage is that you can just put these in here like this and they should fit in there. They're form fitting. Alright. And go the rest of the chorizo into the oven. Now, let's put this up here, kind of out of the way. And so actually, you know what? I'm just going to put the entire roast beef up here out of the way. Oh, that's a big fish. <laughs> that's stupid fire. <laughs> that's one of my best days, jeez. <laughs> So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare up my veg. We're going to sweat these out. We're going to get as much flavor out of these suckers as possible. So, just chopping out the ends. And there actually looks a bit dirty. I'm going to give these a wash too when I'm done. That's a big fish. I'm going to keep saying that the entire fucking time. I hope you guys know that. Have you ever seen the, the show? It comes on like, like Nature and I think BBC Earth and those kinds of shows or channels. <laughs> it's like a French dude from Quebec who like goes around and catches fish everywhere. <laughs> and so <laughs> I started noticing, of course, that he kept saying, kept saying, those are big fish. That I got into it, so yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, first things first. This is a um, olive oil. It's been redone. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it here on the side or not, but there are little cloves of garlic in there. I made my own garlic olive oil, more or less. That's gonna be good for there. That should be good for there for now. That's a big fish. I mean, seriously, this is, this is a big fish. Alright. Next, we got red pepper. Now, I think typically they only use green peppers. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I find that green pepper, for whatever reason, is like the worst for heartburn over like every other bell pepper why i don't know it's the skin 
I guess. I don't know. So, yeah, let me shave these down real quick. Picked up a couple of seeds there. I'll get rid of those ones. Now, a little bit of a weird thing going on there. That's something I've never understood either, the way that these peppers grow. Well, I guess the seeds inside start to germinate or something. But, uh, you ever open up like a bell pepper and on the inside it's like a, a mini bell pepper trying to grip them? I've seen you, Mr. Seed. Good, Mr. Seed wanted to get in there again. Yep, here we go. Look on the inside is just like a baby pepper just trying to grow. Strange. up the thing everyone's all like wait are you serious iron chef japanese or america they won't do that it'll be too edgy <laughs> hmm this side i can use you and i think i can use anything on that side too so leave that out Take out the butt. I never like using the butt. And again, some of the ways that I'm cutting may seem unorthodox, but don't worry about it. Alright. Do I watch Chopped? Uh, I do not. Robin probably does. I used to watch a lot of cooking shows back in the day, but then a lot of them just got over pretentious, like. Ooh, look how fancy I can make this dish! And I'm just like, why can't you just make regular fucking food like everybody else does? <laughs> Is that just me? I don't know, maybe. Look at that fish. Now, I'm gonna use, I think, a large chop on the onions. And actually, all of the veg. Ooh. Gonna go a little bit down further. We got, looks like the top is a bit dried out on this onion. So I'm going to have to, the inside looks pretty good, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. Jesus, see, this is why I took it to the outside layer. Yeah, so if you look there, you'll see that it's a bit like weird down the top. So let's, what am I going to do this? Let's take off more of the top. It goes all the way through that one weird spot right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop it out. And see? This is why I don't like using the outside part of an onion. Sometimes it'll go bad. It's it's literally gotten it's spoiled inside and instead of like well let's try to get whatever we can off of this. I'm just going to throw it out entirely because it's a fucking onion. It's not like it costs a billion dollars. Now this side, I'm going to inspect, it looks like it's actually fine on this side. Uh, let me shave out that much more just to be sure. But yeah, I'll get rid of all this garbage. This could be a very long stream. I don't really care. I got nowhere else to go. I don't work until Monday. It didn't even feel like it was off at all. Time went by so fast that I didn't feel like I did anything. All right, maybe I have a batch of onions that are bad. That one is disgusting. 
Let's try this last one. Which looks fine, but I, looks are always deceiving, right? And, oh no, inside is good. So I'll have to go grab a couple extra onions. Oh yeah, we got a full bag full. Now, it's getting a bit juicy on my chopping board, so, and I just got onion skin on the floor. paper towel to just get some of that stuff up. Let me grab a couple more onions. Now I'm pretty sure that since I've been doing gumbos, I've been doing them a little bit wrong. I'll explain. I think the gumbo is supposed to serve almost like a stew and not a soup. And I think I've been doing a soup more so than a stew. So I looked up a couple more recipes. I looked up a couple different things. And I'm making sure that I can make this as authentic as possible without, well, with what I have on hand. We don't get okra in Newfoundland. Now, not, you don't necessarily have to use okra for your thickening or anything for your uh, for your gumbo, but uh, there's two different kinds. There's gumbo made with okra, and then there's gumbo that's made with um, fillet powder. And basically, it's a ground-up powder made from... One second. Cleaning my bro uh, celery, celery real quick. Couldn't even say it. I kept thinking of broccoli for some reason. Charles Broccoli. Alright, let me just wrap these up. Uh, so, yeah, uh, fillet powder is basically the ground up leaves of the sassafras. Um, so, um, I looked up a few different things, and I know what sassafras is supposed to taste like, and apparently it's supposed to taste a little bit like root beer. So I have root beer that I'm going to incorporate into my gumbo, and apparently that's okay. <laughs> I, uh, I'm sure people from Louisiana would spit in my face, and I don't like <laughs> Cooking shows are so popular. They are very, very popular. And you... I don't think you'll get to hear any of the sound effects uh, for the fact that uh, I'm using Robin's laptop in order to stream because that's more mobile than moving my desktop up to my kitchen. Uh, the only other thing is, I guess if I really wanted to, I could possibly look into... Uh, one second. <clears throat> I could possibly look into um, networking the webcams so that while I'm up here on her laptop, we can network them to the stream downstairs and that way everything's working, etc., etc., etc. That kind of thing. Anyways, I've been talking a lot. Let's get these broken down real quick. And getting them cooked and sweating because it's already five o'clock and I think the last time I done like I think it was burgers and uh, yeah well, actually it, it, was, it was definitely burgers and steak I don't know why I made it sound as if I didn't know it was just a week ago but yeah we done burgers and steak last time and I think it was like eight or nine by the time I was finished like by the time we cooked everything, we actually got to sit down to eat it. So I'm hoping that I can get this done a bit faster this time. Ooh. Again, 
I'm kind of leaving it a little bigger than what I did for the uh, roast beef, only for the fact that this will be going into the stew, so it will be kind of break down eventually. Now, we have a wonky stove, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> basically that burner I just turned on, this front one right here, has issues with it wanting to be hotter than what it actually is, like, oh, it just turned me on, okay, the, uh, number five, that must mean eight, it's like, no, 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 <laughs> number five means number five, please, but it doesn't care. Right. I probably should have put a, uh, what is it called, one of these actually, let's see if I can move this without making a mess, <laughs> where is uh, this, there we go, I did it, I did it, now it shouldn't move around enough, as much, and if you really wanted to stay down, wet your, um, uh, your little drying the fucking towel, dish towel. There you go. I just like to throw that out there. <laughs> Alright, now I'm just gonna move all you guys out there. Now, goodbye, onion skin. Hello, nurse. <laughs> And yes, my knife is fairly sharp. I sharpen my knives regularly or regularly. Yeah, see, the whole our house is, was built for. A, a much smaller and shorter older lady used to belong to Robin's grandmother and she left it to well her dad who basically gave it to her and we've been living here ever since so the counters themselves were made for someone of her height and she was not a tall lady <laughs> but uh, hey home is a home that's a bit too wrinkly for me I'm not going to use it and that's the only thing about peppers is that if you don't use them right away, they can go kind of wrinkly and meh, which is, I guess, kind of good. Maybe the skins will come out a bit better. I'm not sure. It doesn't seem like the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The flesh. There you go. It doesn't look like the flesh on the inside gets weird or anything. Like, it still feels good, but the, the skin is less, it's just way, way more pliable. Usually, peppers are kind of stiff. <laughs> Am I right, fellas? No. What are you talking about? I don't have a stiff pepper. Oh. <laughs> Fun. Oh, I found some onion. Not a big deal. They'll get thrown in afterwards. And again, this is gumbo. I'm not making this for anybody special. I don't really care if the cut is like perfect or anything. I'm gonna get that membrane in because that's just gonna be sponge going in. Hmm, starting to smell good here already and all I'm doing is cooking up the onions.
bit of color, but we don't want too much. I'm going to turn that down a bit. Let that shit sweat. I find bell peppers can sometimes be a little bit dangerous to work with too because of the skin. It's very easy for the knife to slip out, so if your knife is either a bit dull, it kind of just slides against the skin. Now, don't get me wrong, there are ways around that. I'll show you now in a second actually. Like this. Go to the flesh side. Your knife is not going to skip on a flesh side because your knife uh, there's a bit of give on the flesh side so your knife can sink in and actually make the full cut. <laughs> I didn't actually upload my last cooking stream to YouTube. I should probably get on that. People over there are probably like, what the fuck man, this guy's supposed to do cooking stuff and he never does. as a cut as I wanted for for these peppers after but that's fine you getting so hungry don't worry there'll be more than enough food here soon all right now I get to do the fun celery now anyone who's not familiar with Cajun Creole cooking and if you are either bit familiar with what's called mirepoix, which is used in basically every other cooking, mirepoix is carrots, onion, and celery. For Cajun and uh, Creole cooking, they have what they call the trinity, which is what you see here, onions and peppers, and celery. Celery, as much as I hate it to eat it raw, gross, uh, is great for flavor enhancement. Cabbage the same way. I wouldn't eat cabbage just by itself. But as a flavor enhancer, like we do it for our, our cooked dinners, our, our Sunday dinners more or less. Uh, let's try and do several of these at a time so that we stop wasting time. Where celery is done.
I wish I had more room in this kitchen sometimes. Well, that's all we can do. If we ever get into a new place, I think that'll be... A... The kitchen is going to be one of the most important things for us because we enjoy cooking. We enjoy making our own food and good food at that. So, a kitchen is important to us. So if we ever do get to move into a new home, that'll be the first thing that we look at. And of course that came out, but you didn't, so let's just get you guys done real quick. season. So like I said, we're going to season again. So we got all that going. I'm gonna check on our sausages there. Oh yeah. Oh baby. They're cooking up. Slowly but surely, go go wins the race. Alright, let's get some fresh garlic. No one does a fresh garlic, like you does a fresh garlic. sure my dog is probably going insane after because he's all like oh I can't go in the kitchen and see if there's any food on the floor. I'm expecting him to try and drop out here any second. skin on it. I'm going to do it up close again. Twist, twist. And it basically just comes off. You don't need any special tools. You don't need any, you know, all you need is your fingers. And it's very easy to do garlic up. Uh, maybe it'll, you'll see it better in this one. I just do a twist back and forth. Reverse twists on either side. And that's it. Our garlic is fully peeled without us having to well, do too much or work, work too much to do it. At least you get the grill steak later. Hey Steve, how was the cartoons this morning? <laughs> Don't feel bad. He was the only person who showed up and uh, he had to go to bed at 11. Because he, of course, Peter, and he's up all night. Poor guy. <laughs> oh, 
rice. Let's get that garlic in. That garlic press. We're pressing garlic into our food. Gonna raise it again, put another one in. Gonna do it again. Oh, didn't want that to happen right now. That burned my finger a bit. So that's pretty good. And last one. Hey. I'll use a knife to get that little bit on this side. Then I'll use, I'll open it over here above the garbage. I'll try and get rid of all the garlic on the inside as best I can. You leave this without soaking it. It can be quite the McGregor to clean. I'm sure if anyone knows that as much as me, it's probably Robbie. So, I got most of it out, but I'm going to soak it immediately because uh, Cause why not? That's why. Alright, let's give this garlic a bit around now too. Oh, flavor of veggies. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now that the garlic's mixed in with all those other flavors. Science! All I can say about that is fucking science, man. What's everyone else, yeah, what's everyone else having for dinner or supper this evening? And. Our next thing is we are prepared chicken. I'm going to turn on that rear burner right away. I'm going to open up our boneless, skinless chicken tits. And I'm going to chop them up. I'm going to chop them up. I see you there. smaller than I want them to be, but I'll fix that. Actually, I won't fix it. I'll just make sure the rest of the pieces are bigger. <laughs> I will be God, and I will put this chicken back together. So I called you on the tin can I'm 
look like we've got too many people there kicking around. Oh well. I'll do it for the people who are here. Let's give this a stir again real quick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're getting good and sweaty in here, buddy. Mm. Now. Sizzle. Oh, My burner's on six, but you would think, but look at it, it's on max. So, turning that down. Alright, I'm going to need another board of putty, eventually. Now we got a pretty purple. for the stove, but I'll make it work. Okay, we're going to season up our chicken breast. I'm going to add a few more of those garlic granules because that's how I like to flavor my meat. Take that joke wherever you want. And now I'm going to add a little bit of thyme to our veggies over here. And we're going to add a little bit to our chicken. Now I use ground thyme so it's uh, Incorporates, you don't see it as much. Fresh time would be nice because, well, it smells beautiful. Our chicken stirring. That's all we want. We just want it to get some color and flavor. Caramelization and cooking, browning, just means flavor. Whew. All right. Now, now is the time for me to go, oh. Whoa! A bit of steam came out of the oven. Alright. There's our chorizo. My god. The other ones, I'm going to leave those guys in there for another... Uh, I'm going to say 20 minutes. They look like they could use a bit more of a cooking. Uh oh. Sorry about that. Let me just double check the screen there. Yeah, I moved a bit too much over here. A little bit more. There we go. You know what? I think our vegetables are pretty much where I want them to be. So boom, they're done. Move our chicken around a little bit. Big ass pan working for us. But 
I'm cooking our fire gumbo on this back burner. This one here maintains the heat properly. So I don't have to worry about it overheating, scorching anything, et cetera, et cetera. Because we're going to be 20 minutes to 30 minutes making our roux. And that's after it comes to the point of where we want it to start browning. We want it to almost get to the color of chocolate. So I'm going to do some fan dangling. kitchen, so I'm going to make it work. Now, the only thing I didn't really, the only thing I didn't take out yet was butter. And I am using real butter. Oh, yeah. In case you weren't aware, you can freeze butter. And that's what I did. Well, you better take that dick out of my ass or I'm going to shit on it. <laughs> yep, no sound effects. <laughs> and I spoke Sardy Belly with the capital S and T. What I should do is I should have some drumstick fire. Because I haven't ate yet today. And I am hungry. And I've recently, I think, have developed a sweet tooth. And here is our gumbo pot, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're making gumbo in. Now, I may switch over to this one anyways, because if I put the gumbo pot here, you can't really see into it, no matter what the angle is. But, if I put it here, I could always go and do something like this one. This is as far as into the corners I can go without being like, without tripping over stuff, more or less. Now, I'm also going to turn that off, because you're, you're probably going to say, oh my god, but some of that chicken still has some paint. Don't worry, I'm going to turn the burner over here, cook it a bit more, don't worry, don't worry. Steve is the sultan of sleep. that chicken cooking just a little bit more 
Pop in all your juices and flavors, chicken. Give me my dessert. I did that a couple times. Don't mind me, just enjoying some drumstick bar. away place in New Orleans in North America. Besides Hawaii. Hmm. I was about to say the continental North America, but we're technically not a part of the continent. At least the island I'm on. Recently had some new people join the 8-Bit Dojo. One of them was a speedrunner. <laughs> I'm very excited to go check that person out.
Okay, so now out of the uh I'll have to move you guys back in a second. Hold on. Take my sausage. Woo! All the extra sausage. Ugh. Out of the oven. Alright. Now we're going to take a roast of beef. That's gonna go right into the oven again. And I'm gonna turn that down to a 350 instead of a 375. And we should be able to leave that in until we're finished or until we go to make the souffles. Alright, so our butter is slowly melting. Oh, speaking of melting, my dessert. Nom, nom, nom. Huh. God damn. So good. Um, it all depends. Once you get into speed running, it's not that bad. butter, not margarine, gonna taste better, so excited. All right, now we are making roux, is what we're making in this. Let me just get you guys back in here. Oh, oh, oh. So our butter is, yeah, slowly melting. Throwing in our flour in just a moment. Hmm? Cat? I can't hear what you're saying. The root. Oh! Uh, I am just making a standard root, just, just butter and flour. Oh. I'm 
I'm gonna say this right away. I do not like the silicone whisk for this. That's fine. Now, I'm gonna have to turn the heat down. Because I'm not having a scorch burn or anything else that is bad. <coughs> sausage with my hands. Honestly, I feel like I should add in a little bit more flour. Oh. A Hankel's knife? I don't think so. It is German steel, though. It, it was one that... That we got with a Jamie Oliver package from the grocery store, and I was all like, "Free knife? Sure, I'll take a free knife." And honestly, it's actually a pretty good knife. Yeah, I think I'm gonna add a bit more flour. But first, let's add a bit more dessert to my mouth. Mmm. That to be almost chocolate color colored. Hey, there we go. It's a bit better of a picture. That is true. I do have a YouTube cooking channel. I think I'm not sure, but I might have done gumbo on there already. But even then, I don't think it was as authentic as what this one is going to be. Like I said, I don't have okra or filet powder, so I did get root beer. Speaking of which, we've got two root beers, and one of these is probably going to go into my mouth. I told you I had a sweet tooth. Oh my god. Yeah. With a roux, a roux is very easy to stick on and to scorch. So you want to keep stirring it regularly. You want to keep rotating your pan, especially when you got a, a, a pot this big on a stove that is much too small for it. Oh my god, that was the root beer, I apologize! Ooh. Oh yeah, the, the smell is even starting to get good. It almost smells like shortbread cookies. Probably because of the real butter. But it is browning up. Fairly quickly, too, I'm going to add. Now, it's not overheated, in case anyone's wondering. Yeah, we're cutting up this trees are nice and thick, though, right? Now, the only other thing I have to do today after this stream 
is I'm going to test my N64 to make sure it works on stream for me regularly. Because if it does, then that means we should be good for Mario Party 3 on Monday. And if it doesn't, then I can find a way to make it work. I have a feeling the pastor on the TV is going to allow it to do whatever the hell I want it to do. So, that's cool with me. Now, once again, there's so much grease from sausages. <laughs> I know how to already be eating sa I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I haven't ate yet today besides that piece of dessert I just had. And that the sausage does not smell bad. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. But yeah, that's all the excess oil that just came out the outside. So the insides are going to start leaking out now. <coughs> Alright. Excuse me, thank you. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty intensive pot of gumbo it's gonna be more like stew I think the last time I've been doing them like I said before I've been doing a more almost like a soup consistency let that scorch. I'm not sure. I might have just let this scorch. I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure. It's, hmm. I don't think it's burnt. I I think what? No, it just smells very rich. So, in order to cool this down immediately, let's get our stock in there immediately. I think I got lucky. Oh my god, I think I got super lucky. Alright, and I can put in my last bit of broth as well. At first I, I wasn't 100% sure, I was like, I'm pretty sure I just scorched that shit, shit, I gotta start over. Which is a waste of time, obviously. But no, it was not. None of it was burned at all, so I got super lucky. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> You're not wrong. Alright, so we should be safe with what we have there now. I should be able to finish cutting my sausage. We have generous amounts of sausage. Put it in your fucking mouth. Blame the Saturday morning cartoons I was watching earlier. Especially Teddy Ruxpin. He loves to fucking sing about everything. Oh, hey, we're slaves in the mudblups fucking, you know, habitat or environment in the desert here underground. So 
they're making us, you know, dig coal for them. So let, let's make it better by singing a song. I'm all like, what? What are you talking about? Get out! And the Captain Planet comes over and is like, the power is yours! Unless you bought it from Walmart. Then it's just temporarily yours. Uh, I know, sausage. Ding, 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 ding. All right, let's add in some of our flavors, shall we? Bay leaf. And a bay leaf. And a bay leaf goes in there too. I'll treat him. Scootily pip do. I'm going to put in a shake more of thyme. I'm hoping I'm done with this one. Looting and polluting is not the way. Here what Captain Planet has to say. Powers in the fucking roar. I'm all excited now because I'm poking fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mary Poppins and she's from Brooklyn. <laughs> hmm. Sausages and bam. Ooh, I just thought of something smart. Usually, you're supposed to add in a bit of hot sauce to kind of <clears throat> bring about the flavor, but I'm using chorizo sausage, which should have a bit of spice to it anyway, so I might just go with that and see how it is and test it afterwards. Maybe make the hot sauce like a. Uh, Post seasoning. All right, all right, all right. What? Uh -huh. <laughs> Doesn't sound raw. <laughs> okay, let's start getting all of our stuff in there now, shall we? Yep, I do, right now. All right. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that heat. Didn't mind as much before, well, I want more now. Excuse me. Again, it's it's the root beer. So here we go. Putting in all of our veggies, all of our Trinity. I may have to put in a little bit more water. Because I do have a lot more meat. Extras to go in there than it looks like. I'm a little OCD. I'm not going to say OCD because I said that one time before and people on YouTube took me so literally they're like, oh, see a piece over there that you didn't put cheese on. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I said I'm OCD. I didn't say I was over fucking bored.
seems like there is a bit of moisture in these tomatoes, so maybe we'll see. Looks like. Yeah, I'm gonna use all the tomatoes, fuck it. Else, buddy, how's it going, buddy? Ah. Yeah, I am making gumbo, but then I'm, I've also got a roast beef in the oven, and I'm making asparagus souffle. Not much longer after that. Yeah, this is starting to look like a pretty decent looking gumbo so far. Yum, yum, yum. All right, let's get our chicken in there next. because I don't think we really need it. <clears throat> you get the spoon I use for veggies. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's starting to look decent. <laughs> Human hand! Never seen a gumbo being cooked? Well, welcome to the gumbo cooking. Gumbo cooking. Putting the sausage in, and then I'm going to let that simmer for a little bit. And I can actually take a somewhat of a break since we started cooking like an hour and a half ago. <laughs> Ooh. So I've got two different kinds. i got chorizo, and i got like a, an Italian sausage-ish kind of in there. I tasted it, and it's not as fennel-infused as it usually is, thank God. I don't mind fennel, but personally, Robin's not a huge fan. But I think, again, the right things, it's probably fine. Same as anything else. But uh, a lot of times when we get sausage from the store, especially if it's Italian sausage, it's polluted with friggin' fennel, which I know that's the way that Italian sausage is supposed to be. But you can also try doing it a little bit more mild in the fennel sometimes. It probably wouldn't hurt. But yeah, the big bag of sausages that I got were all homemade sausages. So, well, I say homemade, they were made at the grocery store, which is a new thing they had. And they were on for a really good price, so I was like, fuck it, I'm going to get some extra sausage for my, uh, for my gumbo, and that's what I did. There's an eye. Looting and polluting is not the way here's what Captain Planet has to say. Pretty sure I'm addicted to Captain Planet. Now let's give this a stir, shall we? Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to add a little bit more liquid. Just a bit more. Out of stock. So yeah, I'm gonna let this cook up for a little bit and take a quick little break here. I'll still be within uh, microphone distance, so if you have any questions or just want to chat. Just let me know. Oh yeah. They may enjoy it. Again, I, the only thing is I find with a lot of cooking people is a lot of people get into it way too much. 
Yep. But I'm hoping that it stays good the way it has been most of the time. I don't think we've had any issues today. Oh, actually, uh, Terrapin, I did put a message in 8-Bit Dojo, but I raced it shortly after because I thought that we had lost uh, where I was streaming from. Saturday mornings when I'm not working, um, we do a Saturday morning cartoon stream on rab.it, same kind of thing. I think that uh, General Andrews does with anime and stuff on Thursday nights, but we do it Saturday mornings, and uh, it's a block from 9 till 2. Uh, my time, so 7.30 uh, a.m. Eastern time until about 12.30 p.m. And uh, it's a lot of cartoons, a lot of nostalgic old cartoons. And that was one of them. The second one that we watched today was Captain Planet. Oh, are you talking about the cooking stream? Cooking stream was posted. That was that was me. I, I did that before I uh, came up here to start. <clears throat> but I'm talking about the uh, Saturday morning cartoon stream. I had it posted in the 8-Bit Dojo, and then I uh, erased it because the rabbit went down for a little bit, and then it came back. So I was like, eh, whatever. No, it was rabbit. Yeah, I thought it was just Peter first too, and I was like, wait, it's kind of acting wonky when I tried to double click it to make it go back down, kind of thing. Uh, minimize <laughs> and uh, <coughs> we waited I seen where all the outages were I think we were out for three minutes and then it was back again and then I think it happened one more time for like less than like 30 seconds and then we were back again and then it was fine <laughs> yeah no that was me I'm old world gamer Unless somebody, unless Spazzy changed it around and put it somewhere else. Or, or General Andrews. It could have been either one of them might have changed it uh, to put it in the live Bangkok channel somewhere. But, uh, I th oh no, I didn't post. I don't think I posted the channel, so that means somebody must have done it for me. Oh, the fucking bot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> We're still putting shrimp in this sucker too. Yep, no problem, Six. There's a dual stream? Check out the Bank on channel after. <coughs> and as easy as that, I've used three fucking cutting boards. But I've been rinsing them each time. I don't usually like to throw in that much of the asparagus. But I guess they were probably cheap because they were probably quote unquote old. As you can see, the tops of them are still nice. There's only one out of all of them that kind of had that like little popcorn-y look to it, which means that they're starting to kind of shrivel up and die. So I got rid of that one. That other one, the rest of them seem fine. So I'm gonna chop all those up. Huh? Unless I leave a bunch there. <laughs> Test a little bit first because he might not even like it as food. Now, highly doubtful, but he knows now what our dog's like. We say one thing, so he's all like, let's do the opposite. I'm cat. 
Ash. He's like, what? Still have a cat, and he starts coming over. <laughs> it's easy over there. It's your fat pot. He wants to go to hell because he can't. Well, yeah. Well, he wants to be out here to see if I've dropped anything. He knows he got better food here. Oh, yeah. Well, of course. Ooh, also, thank you for that follow. Bits and a follow. I'm doing good. Good cooking stream so far. <laughs> Plus, we're getting really good food. So, how do you feel about the gumbo so far? It smells amazing. And everything that's gone into it right now, <coughs> nothing that I wouldn't like. Like, I'm just... The Italian sauce is the only thing I'm worried about because there's still fennel in it. It's just not heavy... Now, I guess, like I said, where they made it homemade, they probably know that people around here probably don't want to eat that much fennel all the time. But, uh... At least if it's going to be more like, I guess, where there's more stuff in stew. it, it'd be more like a stew that intrigues, that attracts me. And maybe it's, I think it's usually like the broth, kind of, that maybe the flavor of the sausage gets into the broth, and I maybe that's... I like usually use, I used to use a lot of uh, honey garlic sausage when I first time. Because that's my favorite sausage, the honey garlic. I want to like this. Oh, I want you to like it too, but if you don't, that's there's no big deal. All right, our asparagus is prepped. See, he doesn't want to go out. He did, and he's not getting it done. <laughs> he, he can wait. He has lots of kibble there. If he's hungry enough, he'll eat his freaking kibble. Yes, we spoil our dog by making him his own food as well. It's usually just rice and uh, liver or beef heart or chicken gizzards or uh, pork tenderloin. Is usually I don't know why. Pork tenderloin is always cheap. And we cook the meat. A lot of people give their dogs raw meat, but we don't. Oh, you do the same. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll be right back. everyone in the Bankai team who's live. So right now it's a dual stream because I'm live and Pat and Pico is also live. So if somebody else goes live, it could turn into three or four. And then when it gets to the maximum size, it just puts up another link of however other many people are there. So that's cool though. Want to see from a dog's perspective, oh God. Feels like she's starting to thicken. Yeah, I 
one, one whole egg there. Alright, I think I need, I think it was five whites all together, five egg whites, and three egg yolks. What do you do with the other egg yolks? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, cream puffs. Yum, yum, yum. Mmm. So creamy. So... Puffy. Everyone likes a good puffy once in a while, right? Puff patty. Keep them make omelets. I probably will end up keeping the yolks. And probably for that reason, they are scrambled eggs. <laughs> once again, make them richer with the extra yolk. Stop saying richer. It sounds like you're saying money. No. I don't, I don't even know if I know a Richard right now. Powers in me fucking drill. <laughs> why can't I remember anything else about fucking watching cartoons this morning? Powers in me drawers. So, I've never done large souffles. I've only ever done small ones in ramekins. So, I might just do a couple of small ones and I might do the rest of it in one big ramekin and see how well it turns out. And hope to Jesus it comes out the way you fucking want it to. Yes, mother. Mother gets mad. My mother gets mad. Don't move it to slant. Used to watch him with TV. We don't have any dry mustard there, do we? That's what I was looking at now. I'm pretty sure there's a dry mustard. I hope so. I'm down my phone instead of having my freaking hand like a person who's existing to their phone. <laughs> I can't put it down! Oh, wait, is this it here? I wonder. Oh! <laughs> Dry mustard. Found ya! Alright, and we got time. Ooh. And I'm gonna use the rest of the... Where'd it go? Oh, there it is down there. Jesus! Be fucking knees. Ugh! I got a small little piece of parmesan there. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. Oh. Nice thing about this pot is that stuff doesn't stick on to it very, very much, so I think that's why my uh, my roux was saved. But I think that's the darkest I've ever had the roux, and I think that's where it was exactly supposed to be, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. That's a flavor bubble. <laughs> What the fuck did you spell there? <laughs> Gonna take pollution. <laughs> I do. I'm getting steamy. It is getting steamy. It's yum. I'm gonna put down the burner a bit.
Bad guys who like to loot and plunder. Hey, were you looking for the next words? As time proves, he knows. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it said on the... I guess it was Wikipedia or something like that, that it was Tom Cruise. I was like, what? I do know 100% for sure that it's Whoopi Goldberg as uh, Eden. Gonna be actually, I was just like, who's hosting me right now? The only person I could think of was Impact of Pico because uh, he's in Bangkok as well. So we're going to be blanching our asparagus with a bit of salt in that water. Hmm? Oh! Doggy's there? Huh! Oh, God! Making a lot of scrumptious there. <laughs> That's a nice set. It's an okay setup. Thank you. So I appreciate it. That's the best I could do with a kitchen where it's like, over here's counter space. Then you walk across. To the other counter space that's there. It's like a walk-through kitchen. I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> what? All right. I'm gonna turn this down, 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 down. down.
you know, I might as well just blanch this now. So let's get that going. We got our gumbo to put down to like the most low as possible, more or less. Now, you know what? I'm thinking, what am I putting down here? Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you what, because I'd like to be able to take out my roast beef and have a look at it and see how we're doing. So, sorry. Oh yeah, we still got lots of liquid. As you can tell, the roast beef itself is still cooking nicely. Put the heat up now to about 425. Put it back in for a little bit. Switch pans. Mm. Well, it's going to help drive that real quick for me. <laughs> and I'm going to add a little bit more salt to that again, just in case. And I'm making another roux. I'm making another roux. Oh, asking me questions. Thank you. What? Oh, that's probably this one back here. Oh, it's right out already. All right, put it that way. Uh, you can tell us a bit about my cooking experience. Oh, well, my mom was the one who got me into it originally. I think, like, one of the first things I ever did was bake my own birthday cake when I was, like, four. She basically helped. Now, it was a, a cake mix. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I just got, came out of the womb and was all like, I'm Gordon Ramsay. Because I'm not. Probably going to take out that little bit right there that I just fired back in there. But uh, my mom got me into it. She basically, when I was growing up, I got to experience a lot of different foods that most people from my area didn't get to experience. My first solid food. God damn it. Ouch! Fucking egg's not. My first solid food was Indian curry. Spicy Indian curry made by an authentic from India family. My mom was going out with an Indian guy at the time and I guess when I started to eat solid food she said well let's start them with this or whatever so and apparently I loved it. <laughs> Old world Ramsey. So I kind of always liked food and stuff. Uh, I always enjoyed my mom uh, making food especially for the fact that a lot of the food she made was different compared to what other people were making like around here you get a lot of your sunday dinners you get your spaghettis you get your soups that kind of stuff but no one ever made curry no one ever made jamaican saltfish um corned beef and cabbage uh thai soup uh people making chinese food back home not a thing what is that How, are you a magician so 
yeah, my mom kind of inspired me to get into cooking. And again, because I was a bigger fella, I always liked cooking. I was also feel like I've always felt like I could taste things more than other people. I don't know if that's an actual thing or not. <clears throat> and the reason I say that is for the fact that it had nothing to do with like, I'm still hungry. It was, had more to do with, I want to taste that again. More so than eating the food. Which was probably not a great thing, because, well, I'm not a small fella. That's alright. And, well, I wanted to do cooking after I finished high school. And I wanted to do it at Holland College uh, in PEI. And, oh, I thought something was burning. It's actually underneath the element there. And so I wanted to go to Holland College to do cooking, and when we went and looked at how much it was going to cost me to do professional, basically top tier training, it was going to cost me like $9,000 a semester. So of course, my parents were not into that. So, and I don't blame them. It's a lot of money to pay for something for whatever, and you know, is it going to be guaranteed? Now, if I had went there, I probably would have had a better chance at being a cook right now, but then I might not be streaming right now. I might never have met Robin. Uh, a billion things. This, this is just the way life goes, more or less. But after, let's see. So I went, instead of doing cooking in PEI, my parents set me up to do business administration. I know, it has nothing to do with the other. It's, it doesn't make sense at all. But that's, they said, oh, well... If you do business administration, then you can make money that way. I'm just like, that's nice. I'm not really interested in having a business. I just want to cook. So anyways, I went and done business. Then I went and done French. And then I went and done French again. And then I said, okay, right now, with as it stands, I don't really have the knowledge to go and get a job that's worth keeping. In my opinion so what am I gonna do all right I'm gonna have to go back to school what am I gonna do well I wanted to do cooking before well why don't we look at the colleges here I can do commercial cooking here in Newfoundland across the province halfway across the province to do my cooking thing and that's gonna be fine so that's where I went and got my training was at a college here <laughs> and like a lot of the college courses oh you gotta do stuff like learn how to make resume and all that other stuff I was not interested in that shit I was not interested in I guess a lot of little things they had on the side there only for the fact that I wanted to do what I wanted to do. I wanted to cook. <laughs> so, anyways, once I got past the academic stuff that I had to do, then the cooking came. And I excelled at it. A lot. Uh, and that's not me tooting my own horn. God damn it, I just did the same fucking thing again. broken off now. And you know what? That's fine too. We'll just leave those two. Those are separate. Anyways. Um, so yeah. And it wasn't anything that again, it was just I guess I had a natural talent for it. <laughs> and what I mean was if I made a sauce, everyone wanted some for whatever they were making or doing. If I made a soup, I served a bowl to my teachers. And I, when I say bowl of soup, uh, pot of soup, I mean one that's bigger than this would be almost full and I would serve some to the teacher and then come back and it's almost all gone because everyone likes my soup and wants to eat my soup uh, what's another thing I've done oh me and another guy uh, who went to and done the same course as me Justin uh, 
we were both on fish that week. So we were like, hey, we should help each other out and see how quickly we can do it. Uh, in two days, we completed the entire fish section of, uh, of the cooking course, which apparently wasn't done before. Um, when we had to do our, like, you create a big meal and present it to the teachers. It's almost like a tech thesis, but for cooking. So you had to present that to your teacher at the end of the year. I'll put these egg whites back in the fridge. Keep them cold. And anyways, uh, so I went and done that stuff. Uh, I went to go and do my big meal thing. And one of our teachers is known as one of the best bakers in Canada. And when I made my carrot cake, she more or less told me it was the best one she's ever eaten. So, it, it inflated my ego a little bit. Now, I wouldn't say it actually affected, affected me. Not like it would. I apologize. So, yeah, anyways, um, it inflated my ego a little bit. But I wasn't one of those people that still thought like, oh, well, someone said this, so I'm better than you. It's just like, yay, someone said that I'm doing a good job, and that's nice to hear. <laughs> and that was it. That's all it was. There was nothing behind it at all. There was no, and nothing special about it. It was just plain and simple. That was it. So, <laughs> uh, it was just, it was a nice encouragement, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. And... If anyone has noticed so far, I have not tasted any of my food. And I never do. I don't know why, it's just, it's like I can almost taste it already before I have to. Now we're going to blanch these asparagus for about two or three minutes. Alright. We're going to get another roux going over here. There. thinking our asparagus is almost done. That is quite the boil I got going there. Charles boil, to be exact. Alright, so <coughs> I'm just going to drain these off real quick.
I've worked in a couple of different restaurants, mostly fast food and stuff like that because quite honestly I tried working in restaurants, regular restaurants, and I found ego was so much of a thing that it kind of turned me off from wanting to do cooking anywhere. <laughs> for the uh, gumbo. The gumbo roux, you want it to brown. That's what gives gumbo a lot of its flavor, is the roux itself. Should be able to see a bit of stuff there a little bit. Better. All right, now our roux is kind of cooking up a little bit. I'm gonna cook up these. This is just garlic and onion. I'm gonna cook those up real quick as well. In case I'm not answering anyone, uh, my bad. <laughs> um, as you can see, I'm trying my best to do more than one thing at once. I think I'm going to need more milk.
There we go. Anyways. So now that I got my bechamel made. I may need your help, Robin. I need you to put together a food processor for me. Mm hmm? You don't know how to do it? I did it once, but I already I can do it. That's fine. Then don't do it. Leave it alone. I'll do it. Yeah, I know how to do it. Now, I removed you guys because I was trying to get out my Parmesan cheese. I got a bunch of pre-shredded shit right there. But honestly, you can't get enough of that shit up here. One container out of our fridge that's been in there for like three months. We bought a big hot piece of Parmesan cheese. I'm only just getting rid of it now. Some light here, I think. Don't ask, I don't know why it makes that sound. All I do know is that it makes that sound.
Asparagus. I know it's like what? I'm being barely got asparagus. I barely know her. All right, there's our asparagus. Here's our wee bit of. Uh, it's supposed to be shallots. But I didn't pick up any shallots. Instead, I just wanted to just get a little bit of uh, onion and, and to go with the garlic, and we just put it on here. We're going to mince it all together anyway, so I mean, who gives a fuck? Susan is not a blue card. having kung job one day in the future or is it just more of a hobby right now it's more of a hobby i wouldn't mind cooking with marijuana because i that seems like it would be a good challenge plus with the growing population of marijuana smokers it's probably not a horrible thing to look into and restaurant work can suck joy out of cooking because people are set in their ways they want to do things only their way even if it's wrong and you can't tell them otherwise. A lot of chefs have a lot of ego and think that if, you know, oh, well, I've been working here X amount of years, so I know more than you. It's like, that makes no sense. <laughs> you, know, you might have been working here for five years, but I might have been cooking for 10. That, that doesn't mean you have more experience. And you can't just base experience off of just, you know, hearsay, I guess. <laughs> Oh wow! There's also over there pretty well over their particular special. Jesus, that would be something I would be actually good for. I like the atmosphere at the restaurant. Eagles clash was just needless hostility. Yeah. See, God love you guys. Having all kinds of good word things with each other. It's true though. The industry kind of sucks and. Although there's lots of good food shows on TV, that's what drives that kind of shit even more. Oh, I gotta be as good as this person, or better. So why can't you just be you? Why can't you just cook what you like to cook good, and that's it? Not have to worry about if someone's better at this or that or anything else. Like I said, to me, it, just, it never made sense. Let's shine some more light onto the situation. Uh, what? No! Uh. <laughs> no, I 
that's not what I wanted. Oh, that's what happened. All right. <laughs> okay, the light's not going. <laughs> oh God. What? Yeah, well, I unplugged the thing over there and I turned off the wrong switch. I turned off the, that one instead of the one for the fans. So when the fan came out, I was like, wait, I turned it off. All right, I need a book wild. Oh, this is the perfect one. This is the perfect bowl for this because it has one of these let's pour it out of my bowl thing holder thing 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 things. Uh, take this out. Take that out. Let me use this actually. Dee 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 dee. Oh my god, just the fried onions and garlic mixed with the asparagus is enough to make me want to just eat this as is. Yeah, if you're not a, an asparagus lover, I mean, obviously you can use basically any other kind of vegetable you want. And you can do sweet souffles. You can also do cheese souffles. It's basically just a, a really nice puffed up egg kind of mixture thing bang. Uh, I've wanted to do, uh, and I probably will the next time I do souffle, I'm probably going to do ham and cheese. And Robin's probably thinking after now, like, I didn't know that was an option. Uh-huh. Yeah. running out we're going to get the wheel final spin I'm not trying to make a mess, but probably making more dishes than needs to be. Oh, smells like our roast beef is just about done. Chamel coming through. Uh, broccoli and cheddar is also another good flavor you could try with this if you like broccoli more. Um, I'm using Parmesan as you guys seen. I'm just mixing the bechamel cheese sauce with the puree of asparagus, onion, and garlic. We want to make sure that it's blended well so that we're not having gaps. We want it to be all solid green the whole way through. We want this to be delicious. Souffles. Can fail quite easily if you don't know what you're doing. 
they fall. You never open the oven. You walk quietly past your oven. You do anything you can to make sure ugh, that your souffle does not fall. Uh, the couple of times that I've done souffle, they've always turned out perfect. Shit, there goes my spoon. Oh, fuck, it tastes good. Oh, it tastes really good. This is about the time. We pour in our three egg yolks. I'm soaking all my dishes because a lot of this stuff is <laughs> stuff that wants to stick on and will stick on quite easily. So it was a headache. Now, our house, as we said, is a small house. It was made for a grandmother, so it is an old house, which means we don't have a dishwasher. That sucks. <laughs> Let's give our gumbo a stir. And you know what? Maybe, maybe we should bug our, our taste tester to come and try the gumbo and see what she thinks. Does she want to try that? <laughs> I think a big thing that I could do is desserts. Now I think I could do regular foods as well, but uh, I think desserts would give me a bit of an edge. Even more so because I'm pretty good with like cheesecake and stuff. Crab brulee, yeah. Spicy, no, I mean, it's hot. Uh, is it spicy? No, I don't know. Like, I can feel a tingle on my tongue, but that's probably. So I'm safe with adding the hot sauce as a flavor, then? Okay. I'm not putting in a ton, anyways, but. Okay, that's good. Yeah? Okay. Oh! Robin's never really liked my gumbo, but like I said, I'm pretty I sure I was making it wrong before. So, like, this is more of a stew now as opposed to a soup. I bet there should be more than enough for the flavor that it requires without adding too much spice. I put that, what I just put in there, on my own food. So, <laughs> and the hot sauce is just for the bit of spice, but mostly for the flavor, which is what I want more than anything else. Well, I'm spicier. I'll add spice to it later. Alright, all that's done. Now comes the fun part. First, excuse me. First, let me check out roast beef. I think we're going to be done with the roast beef right now. A pretty good feel. Oh yeah. The roast beef, she is done. Looks pretty good, right? All right, we're going to leave the oven on 400 because that's what we need for our souffles. Yes, that's right, I need a hot water bath. So I was going to use that, but... Ah, uh, I'm going to use this instead. Oh. Before I do anything else, 
is, where's the butter? There she blows. I'm gonna take the butter and I'm gonna actually butter up and breadcrumb my souffle dishes. So if you're wondering what I mean, it's basically, I'm gonna get a paper towel and get some butter. That's way too much though, Jesus. I'm gonna get some butter, butter all the inside parts of the dish where any of the souffle mix will touch. And uh, then we're gonna put breadcrumbs into the dish and swirl around so that all that butter gets coated in breadcrumbs. The reason for this is that now your souffle will not stick. If you don't do this, you better be eating that souffle directly out of that ramekin anyways because it will not come out. And sometimes at some of the fancy places, you want it to come out. <laughs> All right, so it's that. I think I'll only be able to do. One. And two is the amount that will fit into what I'm gonna use as our new water bath. I don't think the other one would've held more anyways, really. <coughs> All right, breadcrumbs. Now, you could use breadcrumbs or store-bought breadcrumbs work better because they're usually more fun. Personally, excuse me, it's, once again, it is the root beer. I'm not trying to be rude. Uh, I am using panko. Panko should work the exact same way. in there. And I'm going to try and re-butter these ramekins with that small amount of butter. Butter me! Butter me! Radioactive jesters, butter me! Oh, doggy's too bad you live in like the furthest away zone. Uh, we've been doing Saturday morning cartoons. Oh yeah, here we go. Now we're getting a coating. is fully coated. I'll show you those in just a moment. So you can see what I'm talking about. Whew. All right. <clears throat> so, not sure how well. So, as you can see here, Coated in butter, breadcrumbs in there, we're good to go. I assume you guys can see that. I think Robin's watching still, unless she's falling asleep. <laughs> she didn't say anything. But, uh, I don't know what I want. Okay, I don't 
don't think you need this. Put you off to the side as well. Oh, it was the 90s Spider-Man song. It's uh, five hours of cartoons, back to back, no commercials. Uh, it's a lot, and it's so awesome. <laughs> Keep them separated. Hey! Don't go talking back to me. Drink your milk. You're under 18, you gotta have your parents' permission, but. Hey! And spray a little, 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 little. I don't wear band gay. It starts at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I mean, the only other thing I could do is switch the cooking to the morning and push the cartoons back to later so then that way you can always watch them and come up with food. Spoiled! Spoiled! I see the trick. Robin tried to play a trick on me. Or maybe it was me. Either way, whoever put the the uh, blender back, the, the hand mixer, was all like, I'm going to be sneaky. <laughs> and then they put it up on like speed four. So as soon as it got plugged in again, you would be all like, what the fuck? I blame Robin. She had nothing to do with it, but I'm gonna blame her. Anyway. It probably was me to use last. <laughs> probably to make cheesecake, if I'm not mistaken. Why are you Oh. When well, you put it back, <laughs> it was on like speed of four or five. <laughs> so. Yes, but it, when you put it back in the cupboard. Oh, I There you go. That's what I was trying to say, is it? <laughs> oh, no. I'm more or less making meringue without the sugar. In two weeks, May 18th is when the next one will be. Oh, but, dude, like, listen, don't rearrange your schedule or anything for cartoons by any means. If you're up, cool. But, like,. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I did on the first one. I might start just saying breakfast pictures. Spider-Bot, Spider-Bot, radioactive spider 
Old man. Which means we're at like episode three of everything that we're watching. So you haven't really missed too much. And with the way my work goes, it's probably not going to be like every Saturday. So like, at least you'll have a couple Saturdays to sleep in and stuff. Let's go to far out places. Search for treasures bright. What? <laughs> That's what happens, I suppose. It was just too fun. We were hanging out all night, playing video games. I don't want a fucking Ninja Turtle. Get out of here. I'm tired. No! Breakfast is for one o'clock. Get out of here. Trying to sleep. A pint of salt. And I'll put that there. This one here. Same as we did last time. Just to keep it away from the burner. too much. You just want to slowly incorporate them in with everything else. Peter! Just in time for to see the souffle go into the oven. Now, if you look now, you can almost see that it's pretty well incorporated. It's starting to get there, meaning that, uh, it's almost getting fluffy, meaning that it hasn't broken. That's how we want to do it. This is how Peter does it. Welcome, good Peter. If you tried using your sound effect, it will not work, unfortunately. No problem, dude. And when I get these in the oven rubber, we can have that. Take the rest of this. 
and mix it in there now. This is what makes souffle rise. Now, as I was saying before, this is something kind of slow that you want to do. This has to be a hot water bath. I don't think I added the dry mustard to our bechamel either. Also, welcome game hunter. And there we go. Our hot water bath is complete. Now, let's try and do this. The worst part is that it's very easy with with smaller ramekins like this. It's very easy to spill. I'm trying my best not to. Believe it or not, this is my first big souffle. I've never done one this large before, so it may turn out to be soup. Or it may turn out to be fucking soup -er. If this works out, I'm going to have a bit more of an ego. It'll be one of those times where I feel like I think I've mastered this. So, hopefully, the words I just made will come true. These, this will come out. I'll have yet another dish that I feel confident enough to say that I'm good at. <laughs> now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle some Parmesan on top of these. black pepper. Alright, now I feel confident with that. Taking down my oven door slowly as not to hit anything. I don't want none of this to deflate. Very carefully. set our timer 10 minutes now last thing I need to do before I have a little break is I'm gonna stir my gumbo you know what I want a piece of sausage I want to see how well the sausage is flavored now oh shit well it brought out the flavor of fennel 
Yeah, it's there, but it's not. All right. Would you like to try a piece of this as well? The fennel's there, but it's like, it kind of like, it's not as bad as, like I said, it usually is, but I will say it's worse now than what it was when I first put it in there. And it's hot Italian sausage. So it should have a bit of spice to it, but it shouldn't be terrible. There is the flavor of fennel, hmm. but I'm not biting into pieces of fennel. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Yes, that that's... Actually, that's a, an issue I have with fennel as well. He's butting into it all the time. Hmm? Oh, yeah. The funny part is, I forgot this one thing that I'm supposed to put in there to make it as authentic as possible. Apparently, as I was saying before, filet powder is made from sassafras, dried sassafras leaves, ground up and crushed, and it made into a powder. Apparently, one of the best and closest things to that is root beer. So, I am literally going to put some root beer in there and give it a stir around and taste it and see what it's like. I can honestly say I've never put something like this into a super stew before. I did get you to try it. At one point, I just don't know what I did just All right. So let's see. Now that we have the root beer put in. How much of a difference does it actually make? That's good. Oh, that's good. Now. I gotta stop walking so heavy around the fucking souffle. I'm like petrified that I'm gonna ruin it. I guess so. Yeah, probably. Now, the last thing I'm gonna add in is shrimp. Now, these are cooked, peeled, tails off, deveined, deveined shrimp. And because the soup is already hot, or the stew, or the gumbo, whatever you like to call it, we just put these in frozen, and then we let heat do its thing, warm everything back up, and then by the time we're ready to eat, all those shrimp should be thawed out and ready. So as you can see, this is starting to shape up to look like quite the freaking stew, man. Hmm? Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Here's my gumbo. Sorry, everybody. You guys didn't get to see the fizziness of the root beer. I feel like an idiot now. That's all right. That is our gumbo. Too fucking cold this morning, wasn't it? Oh, Celsius. Uh, 12 degrees is what it is here, and that's nice. <laughs> For us, that's awesome. That, I like that. It's cool. And not cold. Thank God. That's a big fish. Now it's 
stuff in this time. Clean up a little bit. You can light that up, yep. Now I'm gonna have a much deserved joint. While everything is going. Oh, and probably yeah. Uh, ah, there she is. Looking for a cover. We're going to put a cover on our gumbo. Cover will actually make the pot heat up much quicker, which means it'll start to come to a rumbling boil. And so stuff That was the uh, just the outside touching of the roast beef. Oh, oh I forgot to roast beef. It's so good. See, I made a backup in case you weren't gonna like the gumbo. So I was like, she doesn't like the gumbo, but she's got asparagus souffle, which I know she likes, and a roast beef, which I know she likes. So there you go. So yeah, now I'm more able to talk to you guys, so we can chat and converse. I was say you want to grab me another t-shirt somewhere. You're probably closer to it than I am. Huh? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not cold for you, Chad. For someone in Norman that isn't 30 plus degrees Celsius, it's 60% humidity. Oh, I would imagine it is, dude. Jesus. That's like you. Living in 30 degrees Celsius weather for you seems like it's fine. For me, it's like, this is too goddamn hot. Give me back my snow. <laughs> At that point. Ah, Mira Mira. What was I using that for the other day? That might have been during Retro Quest. I'll think about that out, actually. Cause, oh my god, this almost feels wet. Huh? Like see through the back? Oh, well, yeah. Well, Jesus, how greasy would someone's sweat be, right? Oh man, my, my sweat's so greasy that when I'm sweating, you see through my shirt. They're like, well, dude, how come you're not wearing a shirt? No, I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> it's just see through. Gross. <laughs> oh, when Bart takes that to know if it's greasy enough, to make him fat enough, to just rub, wipe it on the wall, see if you can see through the wall. Now this is supposed to be for a small ramekin. So now if you open the oven, is that going to like ruin the big one? Uh, not when it gets down to the end. It basically, the high heat is what pushes all the hot air into the egg whites that makes it rise. And then it solidifies them with the high heat. And right. so then when you turn it down, then it cooks. So it doesn't rise anymore. Usually the rising is done that first little bit. Same thing as uh, Yorkshire puddings. That's why they say the same thing with Yorkshire puddings. You don't open the oven first little bit because that's when all the rising is happening. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you open that oven at any time in that rising period, gone. And I mean gone. <laughs> and souffles are way worse than fucking Yorkshire They're puddings. They're so light and airy. It just goes away dying. Like There's no oil that's cooking them. For Yorkshire pudding, you put them in the hot oil. This stuff here is just in a ramekin sitting there by itself. And you want to close that one, but you can too. All right, so now we're going to change it to 350. And I believe we're going to set the timer now for 20 minutes. Whew. Well... 
The only other thing that we'll need after this is rice. I'll do the rice. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I hate making rice. I know there's nothing to it. I just, I hate it. What? My evening so far is great. Of course, I am going to be eating a lot later than I expected again. But, again, as you've seen, the entire time that I was doing all this, I was being casual as hell. If I was working at a restaurant, you'd have someone who would be making the bechamel. You'd have a separate person doing up the egg whites. You'd have a separate person frying up your other... You know, you'd have different people doing different things so that it all comes together at the same time and be into the oven as quickly as possible. And you got to do it by yourself. Now, I do have Robin, obviously, but... Robin just worked today, so. The other thing is that sometimes it's nice to be able to cook Robin and be able to not have, not have to have her cook anything. <coughs> yeah, how are you doing, Game Hunter? How are you doing, man? And how's everybody else doing out there? Hopefully, you're doing well. All right, so for the small ones, we only have to put it in there for 15 minutes. Do not open the door to the souffles, this is about done though. All right, so it does still have a chance to flop after the oven's been open. First Saturday since I started this job, looking over my stream and I'm trying to make some changes. Oh, okay. That's a big fish. Failing at it though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's all depending on what you want it to look like. Like, I mean, you've seen all my layouts. trying to get somewhere with the conversation earlier with talking about like how we don't have a dishwasher is what I was trying to get to and how our kitchen was small and built for a grandmother yeah anyways we don't have a dishwasher so we have to do all of our own dishwasher which I'm not gonna lie sucks uh, I don't wash dishes often the biggest issue for me is that the bending over uh, is I'm sure it's not good for Robin's back either. But between bending over and using my hands, with me using my hands to do everything else that I do, yeah. It's my hands are not getting better day by day, put it that way. They're actually getting way worse. <laughs> Try to remember to stay fucking light-footed while I'm here. I don't know why I'm like trampsing around like a baby elephant. Do you just have a giggle? 
That's true. Jesus, Mary, fucking mm. kitchen. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for the baby elephant pictures <laughs> or emotes or whatever. What's left in that pan, I'm going to keep that to make a sauce or maybe some other time because that looks good. And it also looks like... Beef's good. Oh, look at that crust. beef is cut up and cooked it's cooked a little more than I want but it is a tougher part of meat so the meat is nice and tender but around the chewy bits it's chewy To that now. Six hours yesterday, not noticing I wrote text mode instead of test mode. Fix my bug. You know, did about 
Family, family showed up a moment ago. Oh, no problem, dude. Family's always bored. Thank you for dropping by, though, dude. It's been a while since I've seen you. I never get to see you stream. You always stream so early in the morning for me. I love you, though. <laughs> Halfway through, but 300 other controls on a form through a null pointer exception. Something didn't exist error. Because the rest of the form did not load any data drop time stuff. But, but you should be able to see what what thing didn't exist and just go back from that point. You should have been able to find it faster, I would imagine. I've done a bit of programming before. Ugh. That's how I usually usually find stuff is just find the word that uh, it's saying that doesn't exist or that's throwing the error. Do a I guess a control F if I'm doing it in WordPad or nope. What was the other one? Notepad plus plus or something on Linux, <laughs> and just go from there, kind of thing. Later, doll. I'm pretty silly. They're not silly. Thank you for the alert. Twelve year old. Gonna try some more meat. Beef probably would have been better in a stew itself. I said that roast of beef that I cooked probably should have been in a stew. basically all I can do, but uh, I'm going to go and look up, because I've never made a big one before, so now I'm going to look up and see if there's a different cooking box.
saying, like, no, I don't like chocolate. Like, Ear wax is good. Like, yeah. Oh. All right. There was in the database bonding. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Which means it could, yeah, no, I know what you're saying now. There's probably several sections that probably have the same, well, was it, uh, was it you said test mode you had to have it or not text mode? All right, this is the moment. This, right now, we are waiting for the souffles. They should be cooked. They should be ready. I am petrified to even pretend to open the oven. You seen what happened last time I opened the oven. How much heat came in. That was from fucking sausages, All right? What are the chances that when I pull out the souffle, because the difference between the small ones and the big ones is five minutes. So, either I'm really overcooking the small ones, or I undercooked the big one. I'd rather have the big one cooked perfectly, personally. So I'm going to do and see what I can do by keeping this. I'm going to put it in for the extra five minutes, and if the, other one, the, if the big one comes out perfect, then we got a big ass souffle. If the small ones get overcooked a bit, not so much a big deal. We got a big ass souffle. And rare me oven mitt, so cow shiny nail, so goddamn shiny. She's making chicken in the back of the kitchen, and she and chicken. Wow, wow, I always thought you would just go I knew it! <sighs> okay, it looks like our gumbo is heated back up. That's off. Alright, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna give it one last stir with this spoon before we move on to a ladle. Now the only other thing that I didn't do that's more traditional to uh, traditional gumbo is I didn't shred the chicken. It's in large chunks. We'll live. All right, moment of truth. So careful right now. Oh, they're still moving around like quite a bit. Stop, please. Oh, 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 So, you guys want to see these better? see my own face get out of here so simple dinner tonight.
Oh, they fell so fast. You can't, you literally can't have them up for very long before they fall. Sure, I might have been able to leave the bigger one in for a bit longer, but I'm fine. Just about does it for me, everybody. Use a lot of dynamic systems, also use the same test mode. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to let you guys go. I think this was a successful cooking stream. I had a pretty good time. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the food things that I've made. Um, I'm not going to promise that I'll be back for a stream later, but I'm going to try. So, again, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you're going to have something delicious to eat just like us. I'm going to try and get the cooking videos up on YouTube in the next few days. Uh, other than that, have yourselves a good evening. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.